ah here I am um, and now we've got time to make our frosty garland so oh gosh nearly dropped it so this one is quite small it doesn't have to be as small as this you can go you make it bigger you can make the leaves bigger the nice thing is there's no template for the leaves so you can make them any size you want to but sometimes it's actually really quite nice to freestyle things we don't always need templates and this is one of those um, one of those um, moments now we uh, there is a little bit of a of a special trick to it um, because you've got that wool top um, in in your flock box if that's um, and that is that lovely green mixed multicolored green with lots of different colors running through it and I'll show you a little trick of how we're going to use this and then of course you have got the brand new uh, pastel colors a beautiful blue lovely green and a really lovely pastel pink we have got a free tutorial of how to make magical mushrooms out of those colors as well and I think they would love they would do lovely tree decorations if your tree is sort of more of a subdued color um, color palette not everybody has bright decorations on their tree so if you if your tree has got more sort of wintry um, pastely color themes those uh, magical mushrooms will look absolutely lovely I've also got the sheep's watch from the flock box this month which is the mountain sheep natural brown and uh, that will be coming this will be come in handy for um, doing the um, for doing the uh, the fur cones and then we've got the all loved or hated angelina fiber now i do love angelina fiber because it adds that magic sparkle but what i want to know is and i sort of um gave a little bit of a, a an idea maybe you've been thinking about it tell me the most um unusual places you have found angelina fiber when you've worked with it where did you spot that one angelina um, fiber that um, sparkles and cannot be missed anywhere so do tell us I have got a couple of places that I can share with you um, but um, let's just see if um, where, where you have found it in the past so I'm going to mainly go to the overhead camera um, and see first of all I have a quick look um, oh Jane says all my days I forgot you were on oh bless you um, you're here now, that's all that matters. Um, Heidi had to leave. See you next time. Um, uh, Liz says, I'm afraid I have to go now. Lovely catching up with everyone. I will watch the tutorial for the garden tomorrow. Of course, this tutorial, if you're watching this uh, live right now in the flock, members group will be uh, put um, onto uh, YouTube so you can re-watch it anytime. Right, let's start. So first of all, I'm going, going to go to the overhead camera so we can um, start this together and I'm just going to give you a bit of a closer look up of, of, this, um, of this frosty garland. We actually have had the first frost in the Forest of Dean. Uh, it's a few days ago but uh, we did have a, a, the first frost. And you can see that these leaves are um, of different co uh, different size. I've done some of the pink berries. I've actually used um, each color. Uh, the only thing that I haven't done is I haven't done any um, any um, of the pink leaves. So I've done green and blue leaves, but I haven't done pink leaves. But I have done green berries and blueberries, and um, and pink berries. And then of course I've also mixed in a little bit of the the wool here into the brown to give it that frosty effect and then you've got the pine cones here as well but first of all before we start i show you what i did on how i made my garland so if if you make that size garland then you can split off probably split off half of this wool if you want to make a larger garland you can actually tease the wool but i actually made um three strands like that so like this three um, similar strands and then I just put it together actually pinned them to my felting mat because what I'm doing now is I'm gonna plait these strands so I am plaiting this and that is what makes the base of the garland so you can needle felt straight into 
um, this uh, garland that you have plaited and it, it's just a really easy way of making a quick um, long strand for you to have a base looks really pretty as well not that you'll see it but it is a really sturdy base and you can felt into this really easily so um, if you uh, pinned it down it's coming a little loose and you can just move your needle a little bit I don't recommend pulling really hard because that felting needle obviously doesn't want to be pulled but um, just plait it um, and get all the way to the end and then you don't need to secure this in any form other than just a, a couple of stubs where it starts and where it finishes so you have um, some of the strands hanging um, at the end and that's sort of part of it so all you need to do is just stab into that a little bit I'm just stabbing into it with my medium felting needle and up here as well and that uh, that will stop it from un, un um, plotting if that's a word stops it from getting undone right so got this lovely lovely um, base now to uh, felt in you could um, if you wanted to go longer you can also make two strands and just have them attached to it but this is sort of the the way that I that I have done this um, with um, with my strands here right so um, and then you have um, you're making the leaves so you can start with the green let's start traditional a little bit and this is a good way of making up your own designs where you don't have to have a template or you don't have to have exactly um, the shape or the size that you need and the way to do that is you've got your uh, wool and you're actually going to felt in into that wool the outline of, I'm going to show you uh, several techniques. I'm going to felt the outline of the leaf that you want to have. Okay, so like that. So you can see I felted the outline. Then you're going to fold the wool that's on the outside in and felt it down. Don't don't felt it down too solidly. Just get it get it folded over and um, and just give it a couple of stubs in the center. And you can leave one end slightly wispy so that you have a, a few wisps to attach it. And then you have to peel it off. Now this pastel wool, what I love about it is it's like the lanolin rich wool. It felts down super quick. And um, once you've got, once you've given it a few steps, it's already holds its own shape. It is a really, really easy wool to felt with. Um, especially when you're a beginner, you won't have any problems felting with this at all. Now this is this is such a simple project, but it is it's absolutely full of techniques because what I'm going to show you now is that even if you've got a shape like this, you can still reduce the size, and the size can be reduced by stabbing at a shallow angle into the edges. So I'm actually stabbing into the into my felting mat, but I'm also stabbing into the sides and I'm making them um, smaller. And then obviously you continue stabbing, turn it over, stab a bit more. These wispy ends are often quite handy to hold on to. So it is a really simple um, a shaping process, but it, there are lots and lots of uh, little nuggets of information in there. Now, uh, the, the um, edging tool comes in really handy. I think it's just one of those investments that everybody should make because it is a, it is a really good tool. So you put your... Um, shape inside it and then you neaten out the edges by going into the two in between the two layers of that um, perspex um, tool some people use cardboard but you can't actually see where where the needle and what the needle is doing what shaping it's doing and of course you can move it around turn it the other way around but the, the the edging tool will give you nice crisp as edges of your leaf and it will also reduce the, the size a little bit if that's what you want to do so 
you can see that the leaf is now really super flat. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from ironing this or run it through hair straighteners. Um, that's that's not a problem at all. Now, if you want to get it a little bit neater, then you can use your multi-tool and felt into it. Keep lifting it off. And the more you felt it, the less you stub wool fibers through the shape into the mat because they sort of felt they tangle up um, in, in themselves. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you can also use the, a brush mat if you've got one and this tool. Now, this tool will not work on my, um, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it literally doesn't go in. It just bounces off, but it will work on the brush mat. So it goes through the wool and, um, and then into the brush underneath it. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. Um, it's quite firmly felted now. So... Um, this is the first leaf that's actually complete. You can, of course, add sort of little veins into the center. <coughs> Sorry, I just need to have a drink. Um, you can add different colors in there. Our garland here has been left really, really plain. I haven't added an, an, any Angelina fiber in there yet because you don't have to add Angelina fiber. So <coughs> you can design your garland however you want to. So you could make all the leaves first and then decide where to put them. With my garland, I made it, I, I added it as I was going along. Now, because you've got these plaited gaps, they take the wool really, really well. So when you attach your leaf, you will be able to literally just felt the wool into the plaited surface of that strand and that's your first leaf on it okay there we go like that okay that was one leaf and one type of method let's do another leaf use the blue and let's use a little bit of angelina fiber so you have very small amount of Angelina fiber and you really, really do not need a lot. Small amounts go a long way. Overlay them and then just tease them and overlay them again and just mix them into the wool so that the wool itself appears sparkly. Angelina fiber on its own doesn't felt, so you will have to mix it. Now, I showed you the way where you draw the outside of a leaf shape onto the wool. Now, you can also fold the wool so that you fold it in half and then you fold it in so that you actually have a little leaf shape just by folding it. And then you felt that flat with your felting needle. Again, you will need those wispy fibers at the end. And that's another way of how you can make a leaf. You can shape it exactly how you did it before. Felt it down first. Get the shape going. Now this one is a little bit rounder, but you can make that quite pointy by stabbing into the sides and just concentrating your needles at that point. Like that. Lots of you will have used um, these techniques already, so I hope it's not something that um, bores, the, bores you to death. But um, this is definitely a, a simple, sometimes we over we overcomplicate things and the simple things just get, lo get missed. Right, so I'm also using the edging tool to get the edges nice and neat. At the moment, all I'm doing is I'm using my medium needle, but the wool really probably wants a, a fine needle now. this a little bit more here towards the end it's like a little fish and you can see the sparkle of that tiny bit of Angelina fiber is just enough to add a bit of uh, festive uh, glow into it if you're doing this maybe you do this as a tree decoration or maybe as a mantelpiece decoration for Christmas whatever it, it works at any at, in, at any point and then you felt that leaf, let's go a bit further down, onto 
your <clears throat> strand as well. So I'm going to uh, check in a minute um, what people have been commenting on what um, exciting places where you've spotted Angelina Fiber. I can't wait to read about this. So I'm going to just have a look at that um, now. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. Uh, stuck to the bottom of my son's foot. Yes, that's. I found a strand on my boss's head. <laughs> I think she had picked up, packed it, picked it up when she came to my desk, and then she ran her hand through her hair. I saw a bit of green flickering in the light and thought, "What's that? <laughs> Did you tell her? Did you pick it off?" Um, I always wondered what it was for. Um, is that the Angelina fiber? Um, I need to one. I need one of those. This Margaret. <laughs> what do you need, Margaret? Tell me what. This is amazing. Thank you. So I have found some Angelina fiber in our dog's poo. Yes, I did. I, I thought, what's this sparkling? <laughs> and it was a tiny bit of Angelina fiber. That was definitely the weirdest place I've ever found it. But I have found it literally in my in my tea um, on me somewhere, completely unawares. Um, and so and you know just how did that get there how did it get there so yes yeah, so um keep it coming because it's amusing me okay so i'm going to make another leaf now um and um so i want to make a corresponding leaf for this one so i'm going to mix a tiny bit of angelina fiber into it remember these are try me products so um obviously if you like them then uh, you can always get more for the um, pastel colors you still got have got, have got time to use your flock um, as your flock discount code which we've given you this month um, and that is October 2023 just clarifying this um, so I'm gonna needle felt the set the first uh, way of how I did the leaf again by felting the outline into it stop 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 looks really nice the green angelina fiber in the green wool saying that because angelina fiber takes on the color of the wool that you are actually mixing it with so it's not necessarily that you are getting um suddenly overpowering colors of green even though i've put it into the blue it it really doesn't turn necessarily into green it just gives it a little sparkle and sort of it's quite um it, it quite takes on the color of um yeah it takes on the color of the wool that you are felting so it reflects off it um there's another way of how you can keep the edges nice and crisp and i'll show you that too and that is by using scissors as long as you've got it felted down really well you can actually just cut the edges into a very nice neat edge there and then felt this onto here if you've got too much of these wispy ends just tease them off put that in here and now I'm going to show you how you're going to make the little berries as well. So that's a set of leaves now here on my garland. And um, let's make some berries. Again, you can add a little bit of sparkle in that too. Doesn't really need to be very much at all. Mix it in, that's always the main thing. And instead of um, making this into a ball shape and then um, and then felting it down or felting it down first and then adding it, you don't need to do that. You can just roll this into a little ball shape with your fingers. Keep it nice and neat. So this is my little rolled up ball. It's not felted at all. And you just place it into the position where you want it to go and instead of felting straight into it all you're doing is you're stabbing around the edges 
So stubbing around the edges just means that you're felting in the wispy edges into your shape, but at the same time you're rounding off the shape as well because it's kind of pulling the fibers taut on top of that ball shape and it makes it nice and nice and berry, berry shape. So just make sure that you go really right underneath it and around it. And that's your first berry attached. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if I can make that screen a little bit, come a little bit closer to you so you can see a little bit better. Um, just bear with me, zooming in a bit more. There, so you can see it a little bit better. So that's the first berry attached. And then I'm going to make a second. As I said, you don't need to make this in um, in the um, red or pink. You can make it in the green and blue as well. I haven't put any Angelina fiber in there. You don't have to put it in every single um, item that you do. I think what I like about this garland is that it's subtle. There's very subtle colors. It's very subtle shapes. Everything's very, very subdued and understated. Mm -hmm. So keep, keep really sparse with the Angelina fiber because that ties in with the theme really lovely that it's a very, a very understated project. Second, actually, let's, let's do a blue one, a blueberry. So the wool is, is beautiful to work with because it's got the lanolin in it and you can feel how your fingertip, my fingertips are feeling really smooth. I'm going to squish another one right next there and get that felted on as well, right right underneath that ball shape. Stab into it so that you've got a, you keep a really crisp round shape going. I've actually got Angelina fiber in my mouth now. There we go. Get that felted on. So you've got your your first sort of decoration on here and um, and I, I wanted to show you of course also how to um, make the fur cone so I'm going to show you how to make a fur cone next so with the wool that you get on your um, on your um, sheep swatch let's take a little bit off you don't need a very big piece at all and wind this into a sausage shape it's actually too much yeah like that. So you want to wind it into a sausage shape by rolling the wool in from one end to the other. Felt it down mm -hmm. like this. Just into a sausage shape. Don't worry too much about uh, rounding the ed ends off and naturally this cone is picking up Angelina fiber. <laughs> oh, it's magic this stuff. So once you've got um, a cone shape, then um, on one end, felt it down so it's a little bit more pointy than the other end, like that. Okay, that's part one. Then you need another bit, and you're literally just felting this down into a flat disc, very similar to what you did with the leaves, but this time it's it is a random shape. So use my multi-tool, lift it off, felt it down, lift it off, turn it around, multi, it's just a complete random shape. And then I'm going to do a few more. Complete random shape, you can sort of felt the ends in a little bit, so it's a bit more concentrated. I'm going straight for it with my multi-tool. Fold the ends in a little bit, make it less long. Doesn't matter if the shape is different from mine. I show you what you're doing next. So to get um, these the the bits that are sticking out on a um, the seeds actually. You're going to use your scissors again and you're just going to cut off, you want to cut off little um, shapes. So again, just cutting off random shapes like that 
and then you start adding these shapes onto your cone starting at the top so felt them on so that they are opening up at the top slightly and then continue doing that along all of that stalk the, the inside of the cone just keep going round and let them set them off slightly against each other a little bit so if you've got a broader part then felt into the broader part and allow the pointier bit to stick out and that way you're getting um, um, almost sort of like a like a flower type um, shape that's opening up towards um, the top and you just have to keep doing this until you've got a nice full cone now some cones are more open than others um, they they often fall off the tree closed and then as soon as they lie on the ground they become uh, they, they, they turn they, they open up and um, look beautiful and full so you see I've now I've, I have uh, on there one two three four five six seven uh, seven of those individual little little um, bits that I've felt it so turn felt it, fold, fold this in a little bit felt it flat and so you can see it doesn't really matter what shape it is because you're just going to cut um, uneven shapes out anyway and um, you can trim them much neater I haven't done that with mine um, I quite like it that they look fuzzy um, even though that's not necessarily what they look like um, in real life but I really like it because the whole the whole um, wreath is quite it's it's just very subtle so you can see that these these bits that I've cut off they are just felted on there's no rhyme or reason there's no planning really and um, just cut bits off and if you've got a shape like this then felt it on so that the broader part attaches to um, your cone so I tend to get four out of a shape but so I've got this shape here looks a little bit like a triangular shape and I'm going to felt it on so that the pointy part is not fastened on it's just the broad part at the base and I'm gonna work my way around the base so that I'm slightly offsetting them and overlapping them but I'm going down until I completely go all the way down to the to the bottom and then I fasten that cone onto my garland. I'm going to make that the last one like this. So there's my uh, my my fur cone, and on it goes. Just putting it here, and I'm going to put another set of leaves or another leaf um, probably just to cover up that um, that it's hanging there maybe next to it like there so let's do another blue leaf let's do that one with folding again fold it in half fold the sides in and shape it into that leaf shape as you're felting it flat it's quite a small one and again I didn't use Angelina fiber but actually it's picking up the Angelina fiber from the felting mat that's quite funny put that in my felting into my edging tool it's quite a small one the leaves can be different size sizes it just um, changes it up a little bit I'm always somebody who I don't like um, everything to be uniform um, so if you like things uniform then by all means make exactly the same shape you could weigh out the wool and have it exactly the same it's not really my style I'm quite happy to have things slightly more higgledy piggledy just like it's in nature not, things are usually quite varied and, sh and, and changed up in nature so um, yeah that's I really must remember to share um, the photos of, of our the toadstools with you because you wouldn't believe Titch 
um, sorry for those who don't know what I'm talking about, there were three toadstools growing just outside under the cedar tree where I live. And um, and one of the toadstools uh, was, well, one of the toadstools was really tiny, so we ca I called it Titch. Um, the second largest had um, I called um, I called Dotty, and the largest I called Tiggy. Let's not debate why I did that. I just did it. And um, whilst I was away, um, basically the largest toadstool, which was um, Tiggy, was knocked over. I don't know who did it, but it was knocked over, and I was really upset. Anyway, I got over it. And then um, the second largest one. And it was it had turned into this uh, flattened out because they they come out of the ground like white little white little p um, prickly balls and then suddenly the the uh, the white breaks away and the red uh, appears and uh, the white bits that um, get broken open are those spots on on the toadstool and they not, they don't cha they don't go it's basically the skin that covered it to start with and then they are really round like lovely rounded toadstools and as they grow they flatten so the top flattens out and the, the more of the red is visible and you see less and less white anyway titch is is no longer titch titch is now big and um and uh, tiggy and uh, dotty are both broken off okay so titch is actually now the most beautiful little toadstool um there is and um so yes um anyway thought I should share that I know I know I'm mad it's fine um so let's have a see have a let's see what uh, people are saying um uh, oh somebody's asking how would you do holly leaves oh I I would love to show you that there's so many um Um, hello Flocka says Terry missed this month because for some reason my card wasn't working there was money on it um, ordered a new card so hopefully next month we'll be back on track oh so sad I missed this month you can still get it Terry because uh, the bo flock box doesn't run out until um, until the 1st so you can still get it um, um, until the 31st and then you can change your payment date on our on the subscription and you can get the um, the flock box for November you can just tell tell it to take your money sooner um, at the beginning of November and then you get that project sooner mm. oh the edging tool Margaret was referring to uh, I've used holly leaf cookie cutters yes you can use those you can use any templates the whole idea what I was trying to show you is that you don't sometimes you can just do it freestyle and I'm going to show you how you can do holly leaves now um, don't have one of those so not much baking anymore so you can use baked parchment paper I've actually put mine away today because I thought I'll cover a different technique altogether especially with this type of wool it is really quite non-stick because it has got um, it, it feels very lanolin rich which means wool like that doesn't seem to contaminate your felting mat very much because it, it adheres to itself a lot more it's not as fuzzy um, Holly leaf, okay. Did you see how Steffi did bat wings? Yes, you can definitely have look up, have a look how I did the bat wings, where you use uh, greaseproof paper as a barrier. Okay, I'm gonna have to retrieve my greaseproof paper. Here we go, and I'll show you how to use that too. Just, just to, so we cover everything. Okay, so first of all, I'll show you freestyle holly leaves. Okay, so you can actually. Um, make a holly leaf by by sculpting it exactly the same way as I showed you how to do the other leaves. So you are laying out your leaf and holly leaves, the, what's distinct about them is that they have these um, spikes on them, don't they? So you can literally just put the spikes down like that. So as you did before, instead of drawing a, an oval leaf shape, you just put the spikes down. And it's if you if you find it hard to imagine spikes, just imagine that these are always half circles that you're felting down, half circles, like that. 
okay and then you can pull the wool in now where you're pulling it in you need to make sure that you get that half circle going so and where you have the spike so you're going in two directions of your needle you're always going at an angle to make the half circle and then you're going out again to make the spike half circle going in sometimes it works to turn your felting mat round so go in make the half circle and poke into the spiky bit to have the spiky part that's one side okay now I'm gonna lift this off because it's getting very felted on I'm gonna felt that side down a bit more before I get so make sure you have the spiky bit still sticking out and the, the rounded parts felted in and then you can repeat this on the other side now that is one way of doing it show you lots of ways Okay, so I'll show you the um, how to do the I'll show you another way of how to do it with the other side. All you're going to do is you felt your wool flat. Just make sure you don't have too wispy an edge. Felt it nice and flat. So I'm going to show you how to do this edge slightly differently. There's very, very, very thin um, layers here, so I'm going to add a bit more, so just to build up the shape a little bit more. There is also the way where you can actually use water-soluble paper and um, felt and draw on it to get a neat shape. Now you can um, basically felt it really solid, and then you cut these little circles out. That's another way cut into it and you just cut circles out gives you a very crisp edge here so that is how you can make a holly leaf um, you can of course also always emphasize the bits that you felt it by cutting it because the holly leaves have got very sharp and clear edges on their leaves and there is no prescribed shape of a holly leaf um, this will be absolutely fine and you can attach that to your garland as well. Just felt it down and then make another. If you're using the greaseproof paper all that does is it provides a barrier between your wool and your felting mat and it helps you to make a, a really nice thin um, shape without um, without sinking all the wool into the felting mat so you can use it just like you would normally with all the instruments and needles what you normally use felt it all down like that and then you lift the paper off first there and because you've lifted the paper off first lifting this off the uh, the paper will be really really easy so you you are not destroying your wool as you're peeling it off the mat you're just lifting it off the paper after you peeled the paper off and so you can repeat this until you've got a nice neat shape um, of course with, you can still felt it flat on the mat especially once it's got some um, hold to it and you've probably worked out that I think doing the holly leaf that way is much easier all you need to think of don't think of cutting uh, wedges into it think of cutting um, half circles out so just cut the half circles out by going into the edge of your leaf and you do that all the way around you can uh, spread them out more these curved scissors work really well to, to do that we, we do sell them they are um, we have the rainbow scissors as curved and as straight and these are the curved ones and they work really well for cutting curves. 
and then you can attach that to your garland here as well like this put that a bit over that side now and then you could put um, a couple of um, of your little pink berries in there for little frosty um, holly berries like that so the idea is that you um, that the garland um, is is quite understated so you're you're not going mad on putting lots and lots of stuff there you can definitely use um, use that cheap swatch to make um, I want to say two if not three of those uh, fur cones and um, add a little bit more here another ball or berry as, as that's what they are and another one a third one so you can see I'm, I'm, it, it is so easy to felt them down especially with this slightly um, slightly sticky wool because of the lanolin it is really really you you all have have tried the lanolin core wool you all love the lanolin core wool you love this wool just as much for its easy felting properties and just getting it straight down now this berry looks a little bit like it's needs a bit more but I can certainly add a little bit more over the top if I if I wanted to so I've shown you all of the different techniques there's your holly leaves somebody asked for that so that was really useful thank you um, and I'm just going to look at the chat again uh, try uh, how would you make a holly leaf have you tried water soluble paper so with water soluble paper we've done that as well you um, you can draw a holly leaf template you can also find them uh, there's loads online trace onto water soluble paper the outline of a holly leaf you can even use a, ho a real holly leaf and draw around it and then you fill it in with the wool um, and then you cut the edges neat now you don't have to rinse the paper out the water soluble paper can actually stay in there but if you do rinse it out then um, it acts as a fabric stiffener and um, it make it keeps it keeps your holly leaf really rigid so for the small garland it's not so important that um, that uh, you make it rigid because they are uh, firm enough being small but um, yes so that's um, that's another um, uh, bit covered here and of course you can use cookie cutters now the thing with cookie cutters or any other templates is that you are restricted to exactly that size and shape whereas if you want to sh um, change it up a little bit and and make it more like um like I like it I like them all to be different sizes and different shapes because that's what nature is like nothing's ever exactly the same then um, you can make your own you can make up your own sizes and um, and shapes and um, of leaves and it doesn't have to be all uniform um, you will fill this within no time I have got all of this still left I barely touched my quantity of wool so you've got loads of this left now for those of you who um, are excited about next month's um, project we have uh, shared um, have we shared a photo? I don't know. It is No Felt Angels. I'm really looking forward to totally um, refining the technique with you all because it's all in, in practicing it and getting it um, down to a fine tee and we'll do it together um, uh, next month. So um, Trisha says I saw black toadstools in a neighbor's garden when walking the dog. I didn't know black to toadstools existed. Do they have white spots then? Black toadstools with white spots. I didn't know that either. Um, Debbie says, I'm new, so looking forward to seeing how this works. Excellent. Um, thank you, Steffi. Thank you, Steffi. Oh, bless. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Sometimes I don't feel amazing, I can tell you that. Um, thank you for more great ideas. I love the scissors, says Margaret. What a brilliant idea. I would never have thought to use greaseproof paper. I'll be trying that. 100% try it. I use it a lot now. Um, especially when you want to make something really flat and um, 
and thin and um, and you don't want all the wool to disappear into your mat or into your um, uh, yeah felting mat basically and of course the edging tool is great as well maybe glue the garland to a hair slide oh I like that I mean this is quite this is quite big but yeah I hadn't thought of using it as a as a as a literally a decoration on yourself I think that's a lovely idea you yeah definitely um, share with us what you're using your garlands for and how you're making them however big or small they are they can be really tiny it would be lovely to have them as a as a smaller hair slide um, in in, um, in in your hair right um, I think that's that's it I um, I, I fare you all goodbye and I hope that you have a, a lovely remainder of the evening I am again really very apologetic for looking so tired but it's been quite an intense week not just on um, uh, on the hours but also very emotional uh, for me but anyway um, here we are I'm here to tell the tale and to um, make frosty garlands with you earrings how about that I think that would be a good idea too there's something about the blue and the green and how it works together for me those colors make my heart beat a little bit faster but um, um, then I do love different colors together so that's it for me thank you very much everybody um, and um, yeah I see you very soon bye